Welcome back to Girls Garage. Uh, I know I disappeared for a while, but I'm back. Uh, I had to take care of some family stuff. I hope you all been good. Everybody had a lovely Thanksgiving with family and friends. As you can see, the T100 is almost stripped down. Um, and like I said before, I'm not picky about my things. Uh, it's the details that matter. So uh, the fenders right now are getting repainted uh, to its true color, silver sheen. Um, I was able to touch up all the black paint wherever it was needed. So that looks all solid now. And uh, next is, there's few things I want to introduce. Uh, so topic of this video, uh, we will be covering the entire lubrication process, how it functions, what you need to do to run it smoother and what kind of oil, all of those things we'll cover. So we'll basically cover the primary, the timing, the gearbox, uh, and how that lubrication process so yeah stick along again i'll talk about the crank timing case uh, the oil tank and all the bits and pieces that are connected to it uh, so the very first thing right uh, like bikes today where the oil is stored in the engine itself on these pre-units that is not the case so majority of the oil is stored in the oil tank um, and there is an oil filter uh, in the oil tank where the oil is filtered through which eventually travels through the feed the feed pipe going into the oil pump um, so as that pump uh, as you kick this over that gear rotates it's it's sucking through that feed pipe oil, oil comes through I'm going to pick up this timing case there's a hole right there where that oil is fed through uh, comes out into the crank and as crank rotates it lubricates all of that part oil eventually drops down into the uh, bottom end and uh, which is known as the sump and gets collected there talking about the sump sump has also a pump that eventually sucks that oil uh, brings it back to the return line of this oil pump uh, and with the help of that it uh, the oil travels through the return line back into the oil tank. So usually when we open the cap, uh, when the engine is idling, we, we confirm that the oil is returning back. That's usually we check for. Uh, then there's a split uh, on that return line. And with the help of uh, the oil pump, the oil travels to, through this line all the way to the rockers lubricates the rockers, the push rods, and eventually all that oil uh, gets collected at the sump and that entire process uh, occurs. Not to miss out, there is a crank breather hose on the left side uh, of the crank and it is basically between the primary and the crank. There's a little hose that's coming out. I'll actually show that in a second. and. Uh, which is which is known as the the puker and those of you that own one of these British gems know exactly what I'm talking about um, and actually one of the my viewers reached out to me uh, I believe correct me if I'm wrong I believe they said they had a speed twin which is very similar to this uh, the lubrication process is almost identical um, and I hope you're watching this because I'm actually gonna explain the solution to the problem that you spoke about and that is this uh, shutoff valve. Uh, now what tends to happen is going back to the problem, solution to all of that oil that pukes out the first 20-30 seconds when you're trying to kick this over and uh, the engine runs, basically what happens is you got to think about when as you're coming back from a ride you kill the engine, the oil that is still in parts of these lines, such as rockers, push rods, 
all of that eventually with the help of gravity is going to get traveled all the way and get collected into the sump right now the oil in the tank uh, not all of it will travel but some of it will uh, eventually uh, whatever is in the feed pipe or the whatever is in the filter uh, and all that timing uh, case, uh, oil in the timing case eventually goes down there also. So remember I mentioned about the, the breather hose, the crank breather hose on the left side. So if that crank breather hose is, let's say at a point and eventually your bottom end oil will get, start to get collected if, if the bike is sitting for a long time. And as you're trying to kick the bike over, the crank rotates, be, and because this is functioned with the help of the gear, right, the bike, right when it starts to idle, the, the first, first uh, 10 to 15 seconds, uh, the pump does its best job to collect all of that oil that is in there and throw it back into the oil tank. But because the quantity is so much closer to that breather went, it, it pukes oil out of it. A shutoff valve. Now, the where you can install the shutoff valve is you have your oil tank, you have your feed pipe running to the oil pump. So our, our point should be stopping that uh, entire oil entering the crank uh, when the bike is shut. The unique thing about this shutoff valve is it's not only manual, but it is controlled electronically as well so what i've done is i have connected this to my kill switch for example uh, as i'm coming back from my right uh, the engine is still running i can come wrote, shut this off right when that uh, sensor gets pushed in it is going to earth the kill switch and stop magneto Right when it stops the magneto, it won't spark, the engine is shut off. Uh, from that point onwards, the oil will not travel to the timing case through the fed pipe or return or whatever it is. However, the oil that is still in these portions, as I mentioned before, the rockers, the push guards, all of that oil will eventually still get collected down there. So benefit of this is obviously you can get a manual shutoff uh, where it's it's not electronically controlled where anytime you're starting the bike you just have to remember to open that and anytime you're shutting off the bike you have to shut off the valve also benefit of this is as this is shut off and I somehow forget I'm trying to kick the bike over the bike won't start because uh, it hurts the magneto now that's our benefit right so you, you there will never be a case where you will run this uh, completely dry and simply uh, in order to start the bike I will have to physically rotate this turn this on uh, my kill switch off of course and then kick it over the bike will run smooth uh, those of you that own own these kind of machines know even with this you will still need an oil pan <laughs> and as you can see i have it always uh, that's just the nature of these bikes you know if it doesn't puke out oil that means it's not running smooth that's that's all i can say so that is um, the timing crank and rockers push guards all of those things right how they're lubricated the gearbox and primary, those are separate units. Uh, they also take separate oil specs. So what I have seen uh, people do is they pack this uh, with grease. Don't do that. Um, yes, it's also a source of lubrication, but you have to think about how well grease is going to do over a gear oil, right? Uh, when you pack this thing with grease, your shafts are turning, and then on those shafts, you have your gears that are biting through, right? For the first minute or so as you're riding, that will be lubricated just fine.
but eventually that grease is gonna because it's thicker it's gonna get pushed out to the corners and that's where it's gonna stay because there's no way to bring that uh, grease flow back into biting those teeth right so that's why it's really important to use a proper gear oil because at the end of the day what we want is to lubricate a metal to metal contact um, do not use engine oil in this uh, there will be people out there that will be like yeah use it i've been doing it i've been doing it don't do it do, do it the right way you get the workshop manuals that triumph provides it specifically mentions a spec for for the gear oil for the engine and for the primary um now now in the past video we covered the primary i was using a atf um which also is, has a different color tone so in case of a leak i can spot that hey that's my primary leaking or that's my engine oil leaking right so that's another benefit and just to show you on this side that's what i was talking about that's the crank breather hose uh, so eventually when the oil gets stacked approximately to that level or a little lower as the crank rotates that's where that oil pukes out um, one thing i do wanted to try is what if we connect a pipe on this and route it back to the oil tank drawback on that you got to think about is as the crank rotates it also creates pressure that pressure needs to run at both lower speed and high speed right so your oil tank needs to have some sort of big wind to let that pressure out there also now i'm thinking about it there also might be a chance because as the crank rotates it not only throws out the pressure it also sucks in the pressure so as it sucks in the pressure it might suck back that air in through that oil tank and maybe some of that oil back in there which is not going to be good so that process is a no-no what people usually do is uh, what i've seen they usually attach a pipe and just let it run on this chain guard that's just a way of lubricating this chain and they never touch it um so yeah uh, that's your lubrication process for the t100 speed twin uh very similar next video i'm going to be attaching this to my oil tank i did uh, fix the timing on this uh, all all the marks are in their place it's top dead center yeah i hope this uh, video was uh, informative for you um how this whole lubrication process works uh, and how the gearbox and primary are separate units make sure to run proper oils for it and actually just to show you uh, what i use is i'm going to actually change this right now there's no gear oil in this but i'm going to be using lucas uh, gear oil 8090 you can also use 7590 um, but as long as you're using a proper gear oil uh, which is what you need do not pack this with grease do not pack this with engine oil for engine oil uh what i'm gonna be going with is a synthetic 20w50 this is also lucas i've been using lucas for quite a while so i stick to the brand i, I trust them um, but if other brands you're satisfied with you shouldn't have a problem as long as you're using the correct uh, specs and then for primary, I'm just using a type F uh, ATF fluid, uh, which again, we talked about, right? Uh, it doesn't foam up. You don't need a lot of oil in there. Uh, if you're putting a lot of oil in there, your clutch will also run very stiff. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the comment section is always open. Um, give it a like if you liked it, share it with someone that might enjoy it. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.